After months away, John Marston has returned to his loved ones. While trying to rebuild his ranch and win back the trust of his family, Marston awaits whatever life will throw at him. As he drives home one evening from an errand, he ponders whether a man can ever escape his past. He is a man who is ready for anything. Almost anything. <laughs> Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say, damn this awful son I've raised with his highfalutin ways and his shame that his mother swears like a sailor and sews like a blind man. Uh, is that better? Your lordship. Much better, mother dearest. Oh, good. I'm so glad, my darling. When you've finished your university education and are far too good to even acknowledge my existence when we pass on the street, and you gently kick me aside and beg an old crow out of the way with your highly polished boot. Well, think of me kindly at least, will you, my son? I'll try to, Mother. I'll think, that woman I just kicked, that used to be my dear old potty mouth mom. Maybe I should bother to kick her harder. <laughs> dear boy. Oh, I am so proud of you. Get off. Now, father's here. Maybe he can beat some sense into you. Something funny's going on out there. Damn dogs gone crazy and wolves howling and birds flying. Well, it's just the storm, John. Maybe. Uncle make it back yet? I thought he was with you off drinking in the fields. I mean working, as you call it now. Uh, he went into town a few hours ago after we busted that hammer working out in the meadow. Well, he's probably holed up in some place of ill repute waiting for the passing of the storm. I hope so. Well, that old man can take care of himself. I know. Just a funny feeling I got. You gone psychic, Paul? Either that or I ate something funny. Knowing your mother's cooking, seems more the likely. Mm. Well, talking about food, who's ready for some poisoning? <laughs> Me, my darling. I am starving. What you reading? Just some book about monsters. Tell me about it. It's kind of dumb. That should suit me just fine. Well, it's all about, in ancient times, how Aztec warriors worshipped the sun. But during full moons, some of them worshipped the moon instead. And upset the equilibrium of things. So anyway, what it involves is, there's this one guy, and he goes out in search of this... him all alone. So anyways, since there ain't no cure, the brave man has to kill everybody, which is absolutely disgusting and completely <laughs> unbelievable. It's getting late. Guess we're not going to see uncle till morning. Come on then, Abigail. <sighs> Jack, get yourself to bed, boy. Try to get some sleep. Ain't you worried about uncle? Sure, but he'll have to wait till morning just like any other man would in his shoes. Good night, son. Don't stay up reading too late. You OK? 
okay, old man? You don't look so good. What is going on? What the hell is wrong with you? Crazy old bastard! Get my gun. Oh. Oh. God damn it. on my wife! <laughs> I can't believe I had to kill that poor bastard. I... Well... You okay, darling? You okay? Oh. Abigail. Abigail. I don't feel so great. Jack! Get out here! Now! Oh, good Lord, what's happened? Mama! Careful, boy. Mama! Mama! Oh, mama! Stay right there, the pair of you. Don't make me no widower now. If you act like a child, I'll treat you like one. into you sick crazy bastards or what I've done to you, but I'm going to get help. Stay calm. As calm as you can, seeing as both of you seem to have gotten a little excited. Probably just a fever. Jack, be kind to your mother. Abigail, teach the boy right from wrong. Both of you, stop biting chunks out of people. I'll be back as soon as I can. <laughs> Guess I best go find me a doctor in town.
Let's go. Wonder what happened here. Mr. Marston, sir! Marston! It's me! Professor! What are you doing here? I thought you went back to Yale. Well, I did, but uh, I came back uh, for another round of research. <laughs> and now all hell is quite literally broken loose. What is going on? Well, well sir, I am a man of science, a man of great learning, a, a thinker, a, a wise man. And I'll be honest with you, sir, I haven't got a fucking clue. Why ain't that dandy? Well, what should we do? Well, I suggest we try to find other survivors, band together, and find a cure. Or fight to the death trying. Well, well, that sounds great and all, but uh, but I'm uh, just peachy. But, but I'm not sure that I'm I'm not cut out for such shenanigans. I, I was thinking more that uh, finding a horse and, and riding back to the civilized north at the speed of knots before writing a paper on the events from the comfort of my study. I'm a scientist after all, right? I mean, I I, I can't do much science if I'm some bloodshot dervish's lunch, can I? Much as I would like. Your sense of duty is very impressive, Professor. <laughs> I'm gonna search the back street for survivors. No, no, no. perhaps staying with you would be safer. Uh, could, could you just wait a sec here, would you please? I, I'm going to wander down that lonely, deserted street and get my bag. Wait, you should stay with me, Professor. You haven't got a gun. Oh, no, no, it's okay. There's no need to worry. Everyone's already dead. <laughs> I left my stuff with Mr. Nastas. Uh, you remember him, uh, Indian fellow, dumb as bricks, but, but a good sort. <laughs> Okay. Well, meet me in a couple minutes. Affirmative. A couple of minutes. <sighs> Anyone here? Hello? Anyone here? In here, mister. Come out. It's okay. Come out. I don't bite. Bad joke. I mean, come out. They come up family, mister. And mine, I fear. I'm sorry. <laughs> we were so glad to see my mom. Because she's been dead for three years from the smallpox. Your mama was dead? <laughs> I saw her walk up onto the porch. And then boom! <laughs> she ate my daddy. <laughs> you weren't... You weren't a bad man, mister. You weren't. I, sure. He liked to drink, but, but he weren't bad. And sure, he liked the company of women, but he weren't bad, mister, he weren't. No one deserves to have their blood drunk. I mean, he knew how to use his fist. And if, if a woman spoke out her place, he reminded her of it and everything. And when my mama was dying, people said that he was lying with her sister, but that weren't true, mister, it weren't. But you said your mother was dead. Yeah, her and Mr. Braithwaite. He's been dead a year. 
And then yesterday, he walked up that street eating dogs. And he loves animals. All the dead folk have come back to life, mister. Only they ain't happy. It's a funny kind of salvation. All the dead folk? All the folk buried at the cemetery over by the churchyard. My God. I'm gonna go have a look. You wanna come? No, I already seen my mama. I don't need to see any more of my relatives. Here, mister, take this. If you can burn them, maybe you can put their souls to rest. Hey, uh, mister! If you see my uncle Mordecai, you burn him. Burn him real good, you hear?
There we go. Folks okay? Oh, just fantastic. I just saw my daughter get eaten by some creature sent straight from hell. Thanks for asking. I'm kind of sorry I did. Sorry, mister. Forgive my wife. We've suffered terribly. What's going on? Well, it's the government's fault. Ain't it always? Well, they let in too many foreigners. Just shut the goddamn border or things like this happen. My daughter was just some satanic demon's lunch because of the goddamn government. I pay my taxes. Well, usually. I think we may be moving a little off topic here. I ain't a wise man, but I have done a little traveling. These creatures ain't like any foreigners I've ever seen. Thanks for the input, cowpoke. Oh, I got flesh-eating monsters feasting on my family, and I'm taking advice about tolerance from a gunslinger. Oh, what in the world has my life come to? And my daddy told me I never should have gotten married. This is all your fault, you, you useless man. Oh, not now, Doreen. Not this again. <laughs> your daddy was a, a bully and a drunk. Well, you ain't no kind of man. <sighs> Listen, I'm sorry to interrupt your happy reminiscence. Is there anything I can do to help? Have you got any idea of how we can survive? Well, you could try shooting them creatures, you dumb fool. Ma'am, it's been a real pleasure. Sir, you're a man of great patience. See? That filler ain't hiding away like a little girl who's wet herself. I thought we agreed we should stick together. <laughs> We're just gonna stay up here until we either starve or have to eat each other? Hey, you one of them, mister? Do I look like one of them? Well, don't come no closer. We made that mistake before, lost half our number. I ain't one of them, you fool. Well, how do I know? They can't speak. Well, I ain't taking no chances. Kill him, he's one of them! Yeah. No, I ain't! Don't take no chances, Silas. Have it your way, all right? Listen, I ain't coming no closer. Do you know what's going on? It's the glass eye. The freak with the glass eye, he caused this. No, 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 it's the snake oil man. These poor folks have been drugged. I blame the Mexicans. They haven't been struck down. All right, we heard a lot of stories, mister. Some say it's a moon, some say it's drugs. Hey, don't come no closer now. Stand back. Apparently, it's worse in New Austin. Must be where it came from. And it looks like I'm headed down to New Austin. Did one of you say snake oil? It's the glass eye. I blame the Mexicans. Oh. Connie McTavish, you don't know nothing. You always was an ignorant shrew. I bet your husband's glad he's dead. <gasps> well, at least my husband never took favors from the stargazers, Lucille Billingsgate. You say you're sorry, you hillbilly white trash. Yeah, yeah, now how are we gonna rebuild America like this? Now, see, I thought we had it all decided. We was gonna be kind and gentle and pay homage to our leader who happens to be me. Sounds like you folks have this all worked out. Have yourself a fine America, and good luck. We never had that decided. We decided we would hold elections and that I would be leader. You can't even read. Well, I, I got gravity. Well, I mean, gravy. I mean, uh, folk respect me. I am the new king, Archibald Andrews, me. Now pay him. <laughs>
Hey, I got one. Got what, mister? The damn Sasquatch. The filthy thing was going to eat my dog when this girl hollered out. And I shot the thing right through the heart. Boom, like that. Yeah. You feeling all right, mister? I've seen a lot of strange things recently, but no Sasquatch running around here. Nor no place else. They, they're made up. There's Sasquatches every place, cowboy. They're nastier than your mother-in-law with a bad case of that virus. Down in Manzanita Post, they ate a little girl. Are you serious? Do I look like I'm joking? The hills are infested with them. Kill them. Kill the bastards before they kill all of us. Kill them. Kill them. I ain't afraid of you, you dumb, hairy bastards. Shoot me, human! Shoot me! Oh, I will, you foul creature of the night. You'd be granting me peace. Why's that? Keep you from eating more babies? 
in the name of all the traits are you talking about, human? You eat babies. You have to to survive. Everyone knows that. Ain't your fault. We eat berries and mushrooms, you fool. But we did. Now none of us are left. Some maniac's been murdering us. The last of my kind. We've lived in these hills a thousand years. You eat babies. If you say so, human. My family is gone. My kind is gone. Shoot me. I can't take it anymore. Make it stop. <laughs>
the earth and you turn up. Could my week get any worse? Oh, nice to see you too, Miss McFarland. Oh, I thought you'd be dead. I heard things were bad in West Elizabeth. Sure. <laughs> but it'll take more than an apocalypse to take me down. What are you? A demon or a cockroach? Both, I fear. How's your father? Fine and dandy. He should be coming out of that barn any moment now. Daddy! What's he doing in the barn? Daddy, John's here! Mr. Marston, you remember? That idiot bounty hunter. What was he doing in the barn? Just rounding up the undead and keeping them safe so the rest of us can go about our business. He's a real man. He's probably playing around with them. Daddy, stop teasing me! Now come on now! How long's he been in there? Not long. Only since yesterday. Yesterday? I better go have a look for him. Would you, John? You are kind. Call out to me if you find anything. I will do. Sorry, Mr. McFarland. You were a good man. Well, John, you always do bring sunshine to my life. I'm sorry about your father. I'd like to say he died doing what he loved. But he never was one for eating folks. Not slathering from the lips and howling at the moon. I guess I'll content myself with saying that he died protecting those he loved. Indeed. Well... Take care of yourself, Bonnie. You too, John.
of choice. Hello, John. Welcome to paradise. Hello, Marshal. <laughs> Might have known you'd survive. What's going on? Do I look like I commune with the undead? I don't know. Well, then how would I know? My job is to take care of the folk who live here. Oh, you <laughs> heard that one. How's that going? How's that going? Well, let me put it to you this way. Cattle rustling and bank robbery are at an all-time low. But murder, blood drinking, and psychotic episodes seem to be somewhat prevalent. Either that, or I'm dreaming. That's what I'm hoping, too. How was it getting in here? It was crazy. Oh, they must be hiding again. They come in and... And just disappear. Town's been nearly overrun a couple of times. Now we're low on ammunition, and I'm two men down. I'll help you clear the place out if you like. You're a good man, John Marston. But before that, I'm gonna need my deputies back. What happened to them two clowns you had before? Gone? Maybe. I sent Jonah off to look for Eli. They've both been gone for several hours now. Who'd want to eat one of them? <laughs> That's a good question. Where'd you send them? Out near the general store. 
Jonah's got one of these new guns. I'm sure he can't run into any trouble. These things, they'd stop an elephant. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm sure you got your own troubles. Hey, mister. Hey, Pard. You seen a couple deputies nearby? Marshall's boys, Jonah and Eli. Are they Jews, mister? They sound like Jews. I don't know. Why? Why? <laughs> this whole thing is nothing but a Jewish plot. You do know that, don't you? I find that highly unlikely, amigo. Well, I don't like Jews. Or colored folk. Or natives, now that you mention it. Well... You're a nice, kind-hearted man to meet in a time of trouble. Kind does not come into it. Why? What are you talking about? Why? I bet you like Catholics. I can't stand them neither. Nor women. Fabians, socialists, homosexuals, Asians, or British. Between them, they've ruined this country. Ruined it! It was a good country once! Now people are eating each other, and it's all the fault of the Jewish, British, Catholic, homosexual elite and their ideas. Well, I, for one, won't stand for it. Have you ever met a Jewish person? <laughs> Thankfully not. Or a British, Catholic, homosexual? Not in my store. Oh, I, I get it. I see you acting clever. Well, let me tell you this. The Jews killed Lincoln. That's why there is a triangle on the money. And they run Europe like one of them Arabian harems. Now they've sent this here plague to kill all us decent folk. Yep. You, sir, are truly a remarkable fella. Thank you kindly. I must say, it's a rare pleasure to meet someone with such a grasp on human history. You take care of yourself. I'd hate to see you get savaged by someone and watch the life force drain from your hate-filled body. Hey, hold on there. Why don't you join me in my fight, sir? It's not too late. I fear it is for me. Then I will fight them alone. All of them. America is the land of the free. And that means free to people like me, Herbert Moon. Absolutely. No! Oh, no, no! No! You can't eat me! I'm Herbert Boys, Marshall sent me and need some help. Guess you got other plans. Seriously, enjoy your meal, no problem. Easy now, gentlemen. Remember all the fun times we had? Fight 
guess you two would get it. John. Hello, Marshal. So, you find the boys? I found them. I understand. I hope it was fast for them. It was fast. And they died with their bellies full. Well, one of them did. Good. That there's Jonah's gun. Here, you keep it. After all, you earned it. Thank you. Take care of yourself, John. You too, Marshal. Somebody's out there. He ain't one of them. Open the gate. Howdy, mister. Howdy. You're gonna be okay. Step right up! Step right up! Don't be shy now. Don't be shy. Nature confounds us, but science saves us. That's the truth, sir. That's the truth. West Dickens patented tonic. The only 100% original, 200% guaranteed cure against the undead stalking this earth. It not only brings health and fitness to the sick and needy, it repels the undead and saves souls. Why, it's a natural miracle, and it's available now, here, at the low, low price of only 100 solid gold coins. That sounds expensive, but what price eternal damnation? <laughs> you, sir, you look healthy. Would you like to give it a try? Me, sir? Yes, sir. Would you care to demonstrate the undead defeating possibilities of this patented elixir? No, sir, I would not. What I would like is for you to stop peddling this nonsense right now. 100 gold coins? Well, what price would you pay for survival? You tell me, Mr. West Dickens. You tell me. Well, since you put it that way, um, why don't all you chaps all take one for free now? And uh, if you like it, when you like it, uh, you'll know where to find me. Uh, you won't find any undead around me. <laughs> Take it, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. These people have lost their families. They've lost everything. Well, that's not my fault. I'm just trying to make an honest living here. No, you're not. Well, uh, okay. But can I help it if demand is high? High? I'm offering the people hope, John. That's a precious commodity. The tonic really works. <laughs> These poor, awful, undead creatures can't stand it. <laughs> Come here, take a look. Works like a charm. Uh, well, it wasn't quite what I expected. 
This stuff is like catnip to those bastards. Uh, well, I'm, I, I need more desert sage and uh, violet snowdrop, and then I know I can cure this foul plague. Okay. Back to doing your dirty work, am I? Now, don't be like that. Don't you remember the good times? Please? I'm an old man! All right. Here. Take it. Maybe you can use it to attract some of them. Okay. I'll see what I can do. And thanks. I'm sure this will come in real handy in case I want to meet some new and interesting friends. Interesting. myself into this.
This looks like the one. This looks like the one. That's what I've been after. Seth. Seth, you okay? What's going on? Oh, hey there, John. Fancy a game of cards? Not right this minute. You remember Moses, John. He's... He's, he's, he's a, a darn sight more loyal now than he was before. <laughs> uh, come here, boy. Come on. Come here, boy. What are you doing? We were boyhood friends, John. Moses is having a tough time right now. Ain't you, pal? What's going on? We're playing cards. Relax, sit down. I mean, with the undead walking the face of the earth, you crazy dumb bastard. 
That ain't nothing. Ain't nothing? I seen husbands eating wives, mothers eating sons, graves popping open and the undead rising up. It sure as shit is something. Oh, boo hoo! Big tough John Marson has scared a little undead creature walking around. Moses wouldn't hurt a fly, would you, darling? Besides, this ain't nothing new. Folks in Blackwater blaming it on that glass eye you found. Folks! 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 Damn them folks, John Marston! Damn them! And damn you! Get them! Get them, Moses! Get them! After all I've done for you, Seth, and I thought loyalty was important to you, You can't hurt me. Moses, get him. Go! Yeah. Get him! Get me, Moses. Looks like your dog's lost his bite, Seth. Now what the hell's going on? The dead have risen, and a virulent plague is turning people into flesh-eating crazies. What the hell you think's going on, genius? But why? But why? 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 Why not? Why not? <laughs> why the hell not? Because it ain't natural. Who made you Mother Nature and Mother Superior all at the same time? Who made you, John Marston? Same as made me. Same as made Moses. Is there a cure? <sighs> These things tend to fade away. Now. If you want to get rid of it, you should go clear the graveyards. Either that, or stop worrying and become one of them. Now, if you excuse us, we got good times to remember. Happy times. Okay. See you soon, then, Seth. Come on, Moses. It's your deal. Diamonds are trumps.
<laughs> Another satisfied customer, Mr. West Dickens. Oh, hello, John. Yeah, poor fellow can't get enough. As I see. Get rid of him, would you? Why? Well, because we're old friends. No. Uh, uh, because uh, we'll team up and fight the forces of darkness together? No. Uh, because I've got something you want. Uh, uh, trust me, you cynical bastard. Oh. 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 Thank you, dear boy. Oh. Thank you. Oh. 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 Did you get the stuff? Of course. Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, wait just a minute. <laughs> ah, here you go. Now these should help. If I've got my mathematics correct, they'll blow the buggers apart. <laughs> and if you've got your sums wrong? Oh, ye of little faith. Now listen, John. You're going to need some more serious weaponry. I've got a plan. <laughs> but you need to pick up some old parts at Riley's charge. Another shopping trip. Yeah, well, excuse me if my efforts at salvation are interrupting your busy social calendar, John. I'm only trying to help because... Because we're, we're old friends. I know. <laughs> You better not be wasting my time. Uh, me? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Perish the thought. Wes Dickens! Uh, Nigel! Where are you, old man? You better not have gotten killed. Under here! <laughs> Get out here. Are you alone? No. 
I brought the great mass hordes of the undead with me. Of course I'm alone. Well, it's not the undead I'm worried about, dear boy. I kind of like them. It's the normal people I can't stand. What's happened? Now, don't be like that. I haven't done anything, or stolen anything, or even lied that much. What then? A bunch of people just chased me out of town. They blame me for everything that's happened. I tell you, John Marston, I've been selling health tonics for years, from here to Timbuktu, and never once has there been a, a demonic bloodlust or the undead rising up. It's preposterous. OK. No. They want to hang me, me, an honest salesman. Can you believe that? Snake oil merchant who cried wolf. Well, yeah, something like that. Um, well, I'm headed south. I'm, I'm headed down to Mexico. I hear things are much better down there, not to mention the, uh, the climate and the nice locals, but uh, also the merciful lack of cannibalistic morons with infectious eye diseases. <laughs> oh, did you uh, get the bits and bobs I requested? Sure. Ah, oh, ha, ha, excellent. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> OK. No, I don't want to touch it. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, there. Ah, see, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here you go. <laughs> I risked my life for this? A blunderbuss? Is this a joke? What is this, 1850? Oh, ye of such little faith. You've been hanging around cattle and killers too long. You've got the compassion of a mass murderer and the intellect of a cow patty. I'll stick your faith in this gun where the sun don't shine. This is the weapon of choice for demonic horde killers everywhere, from Romania to Edinburgh and all the other places the undead roam. You can put pretty much anything into it and blow a bunch of the buggers away in one go. Makes your rifle look like a pea shooter. You better not be lying to me. Uh, would I lie to you, John? <laughs> uh, to others, I admit the occasional uh, <clears throat> sin of omission. <sighs> but to you, never, dear boy. Now, I, oh, 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 wait, 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 oh, oh, ah, yeah. Now, I am headed down to Mexico. Is there any chance that uh, I will see you there? We shall see. Well, if you're interested, I should be at Solomon's Folly in a few days, trying to figure out a way to get in. I hear the border is not as open as it used to be. <clears throat> Ta-ta! <laughs>
this'll do. You okay, mister? Oh! Ah! Oh, Mr. Marston! Well, I might have guessed you wouldn't have got the lurgy yet. Not yet. I'm trying to help my family. Yes. Quite the hobby of yours, that. Sure. Listen. Any idea what the hell's going on here? No. But it's brilliant. Man turned against man. Kind-hearted neighbors turned into savage, flesh-eating monsters. This hit? It'll make a fantastic movie. Who would enjoy that? What? What kind of sick person would like that? My kind sir. The lowest common denominator. My people. You're gone, friend. On the contrary, sir. You misunderstand me. Come now, you're a smart fellow. Allow me to illuminate. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Marston. What I need is one of those nasty buggers that spits poisonous snot on you. If in your travels you can find a spare one, we can make moving picture history. You're worse than they are. Each to their own, Mr. Marston. But if you find the time... I see art has got the better of you. Stupidity got the better of me, but I felt I should help an old friend. I appreciate that, sir. Are you ready to watch the creation of magic? If you say so. Wonderful! Let's put the star into his first seat. Right over here. You can put him down here. Oh, oh, oh. He's in big trouble. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Oh, this looks really great. Movie making history, my friends. Uh, uh, there you go, my man. Out. There we are. Just rest. And ready, ready, ready. I see you. You're going to be stars. Do something interesting now. Ah! And action! 
Listen! Zombies, go! Oh, your hands are eat human flesh! Oh, that's right, that's right! Oh, no! Oh! In a time of enormous crisis, I might have known the government have you boys doing the work of a common clerk. Well, thank you for your input, citizen. I'm glad you find life so funny. <laughs> My pleasure. Do you think this poor girl's family finds life quite so funny right now? Family? I assume she was a common killer. She's a missing person. Missing presumed dead, I guess. But you keep cracking them jokes. I'm sorry, mister. I guess I spoke a little out of turn. I ain't the one you should be apologizing to. Just find the girl. She's 15. Millicent Waterbury. Are you Millicent? Yes. Come on. Your family's worried sick. Never in all my life. Thank God you came along. What were you doing out here by yourself? Climb on. Let's get you home. Yeah. What's your name, mister? John. John Marston. I've heard that somewhere before. You from around here? I spent some time down here, but I live in West Elizabeth. I have a small farm up there. My wife and son, they've got the infection. That's terrible. Do you think there's a cure? I sure hope so. Otherwise, well, I don't want to think about the otherwise. Let's go! Did you see them clawing at the house like a pack of wolves? It was like they could smell me in there. 
No offense, miss, but they could. It's horrific! Are they alive or dead? Yeah! This sickness, it ain't like nothing I've seen before. You're telling me. I mean, my Uncle Pete gets incoherent and mighty gropy from time to time and coughs up some billions hours of mourning, but never anything like this. I'm pretty sure whatever your Uncle Pete's got is saloon related. Now let's try to get you back to whatever is left of your family in one piece. Yeah! can't seem to get away from this place. <laughs> like I said, thank you. Good luck helping your family, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Plenty of more just like him, Mr. Comedian. We got a whole host of missing folk. Seth, sorry to interrupt your party. Hey, John, come join us. We're having a jig. <laughs> John, have you met Mary Lou? What about Francie? <laughs> I did as you asked and cleared out the rest of the graveyards. Doesn't seem to have done much good. Good? 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 Is dead good? Are you good? <laughs> Stop with your nonsense, you annoying fool. What's going on? The world's turning, John Marston, and the moon with it. Woohoo! <sighs> Day follows night, and hate follows love. Oh. Okay, you asked for it, Seth. You either stop dancing and start talking, or prepare to join Moses and the rest of these freaks. Are you constipated, John? You look very angry. You get constipated when you're angry. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I'm warning you, Seth. Oh, I'm warning you, Seth. I'm warning you. Don't play with the undead, Seth. Don't chase treasure. Don't waste your time searching for treasure and discover only a glass eye. <laughs> glass eye. Well, warn all you want, cowboy. <sighs> That's a load off my mind. Why well, didn't I think about that before? Because we weren't dancing. <sighs> hey, John. Well, how are you? Would you like a drink? We got blood mucus surprise. Come on! Seth, what is going on? Aztecs. Or, or Incas. Or, or it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's all the same. Once every 200 years, this land is doomed. <laughs> That's why we love it. Mexico. Mexico, John. <laughs> ah, Mary Lou, may I have the honor? Oh. You're a sick man.
Ah, Mr. Marston. What's going on? You got a passage into Mexico? Uh, for me, no. Uh, but for you, maybe. Uh, it all depends on your relationship with good old Uncle Samuel. What are you talking about? Uh, well, uh, the border is indeed closed. But the army is sending a train down there. Now, whether it's to help the Mexicans there or to escape the problems here, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but I thought things were better in Mexico. Uh, well, uh, better or worse, it's uh, certainly different. <laughs> so why am I going and not you? Ah, well, that's a matter of age, dear boy. The army don't have many recruits with quite my level of experience. <laughs> so... So, you are on your own. <laughs> There's a train at uh, Benedict Point, and it's leaving soon once they've got all of the soldiers rounded up. Okay. And uh, your venerable friend here has done some more help. I have found some less than happy campers who have given up on glory and abandoned Uncle Sam's ranks. Uh, they're hiding out at Scratching Post. One of them might give you a uniform. <laughs> okay. And what about you? Ah! Baghdad, dear boy! <laughs> well, either that or Fort Mercer. Or perhaps it's time to meet my maker with drool coming out of my mouth and a lust for human blood. <laughs> <laughs> you take care of yourself. I always do, dear boy.
army now. Form a perimeter! We don't want any more surprises! Thanks for helping out. They came out of nowhere. Anytime, partner. Say, you fellas have a spare uniform? What the hell for? My family's in trouble and I need to get over the border. I hear there's an army train going that way. Sure, what do I care anymore? <laughs> you earned it. There should be one in the chest by the tent. Help yourself. What? <laughs> Thanks. I feel like such a noble patriot. Come on! Let's go. Good luck to you! Stay safe! Yeah! You did real good, soldier. Basic training was very thorough. Well, that's good. These degenerates are only good at horn and drinking. Let's roll out!
Get down and get the debris off the track. Let's go, let's go. Come on, soldier, move, move. All right, make Uncle Sam proud, soldiers. Come on. Clear the tracks quickly. Let's go. Mexico. Okay, sister? Well, I'm alive, senor. Although, come to think of it, I just committed a mortal sin. Claim self-defense. Always works for me. Yes, well, I fear my judges may be a little more stringent than yours. Uh, but I appreciate the advice. Unfortunately, many of my nuns are not so resourceful as you or I. Their innocence will kill them, which is truly a terrifying reality. I would not know. I think maybe you would. But let us leave the psychotherapy and focus on more pressing matters. They are locked in the church, while hordes of, of, of these half-witted demons are, are trying to get to them. It'd be my pleasure. You're a true Samaritan, sir. You know, 
They say the devil has all the best tunes. It may be so, but it seems he also has the most half-witted friends. <laughs> so you know Bill Williamson then? Excuse me? Just a little joke. I'll do as best as I can to save the nuns.
Sister, I've done as you asked. Bless you. But it's not sister. It's Mother Superior. Mother Superior Calderon. Our bishop was a stickler for regulations. <laughs> Until he got sick last week and ate half of the cathedral choir boys. I'm sorry. I only mention it because my girls are laughing at you calling me sister. What do you think is causing all this? Hmm. Déjame ver. Mexico is an old country. Many faiths have lived and died here. Many evil spirits have flourished. I have no idea what is afflicting the people here. But I know it is a sickness of the soul. Something supernatural, maybe. Certainly nothing rational. Perhaps if you were to get me a live one of these creatures, we could try a couple of experiments. Certainly. Get me a new one. One who was recently human. I want to work with a subject who has only recently turned. I'll see what I can find for you. Gracias, señor. <laughs> Cállense. No puedo creer cómo se portan. Mother Superior, I think I have a test case for you. Senor Marstone, you're a true pilgrim. That I ain't. Hmm. Now let's see. <laughs> well, it certainly isn't the flu. Their eyes are so devoid of love, of, of anything. <laughs> oh, lively one I see. Here. What is that? Holy water. <laughs> I think we may have something. It seems to be working. Maybe. Maybe not. But it seems as if you were nearly saved. Spiritual infections are confusing things, Senor Marston. None of us can hope to understand them properly. But he came back for a minute. 
I bless the water, but perhaps my faith is not that strong. I have to do more thinking, but I need time. Every day, more of my people fall as the dead rise in Sepulcro. Then perhaps it's time I put them to rest. Take the holy water. Maybe it will be a calming balm for the restless departed. Thank you. No, thank you. You are a blessing in an unusual form.
Do you think I like shooting women, you filthy whoremongering wretch? Gracias, señora, que estaba viendo a mi tía, que tal vez ya desculpada. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Go on. Go on, get it. Andale, gracias. Hello, Mr. Ricketts. Hello, John. I see you're enjoying another vacation in our little resort. Something like that. Well, we got sunshine, sand, and a plague that makes people eat each other. Come to think of it, it must feel just like America to you. What is going on? I thought things were calmer in Mexico. This is calm. What's a little light cannibalism among friends? Excuse me. So, how have you been? Good. Well, apart from my wife and son being tied up and trying to rip my soul clean out of my body, <laughs> and the entire earth turning into hell. Good. Real good. You know, John, I've lived a long life. I've seen this land when it was just wilderness and scrub. I've seen missionaries nailed to crosses by shaman and burn into just the cinders of their misguided devotion. I've seen slaves get set free and return to a bondage even more confusing than the one they left behind. I've seen diseases wipe out entire communities in a weekend. I've seen bad men make their own Valhalla out in the bush, with harems of maidens and the hunting of men as a sport. I've seen men struggle with principles and morals and the very meaning of existence. I've killed all that can be killed. I've never, in all my natural-born days, seen anything quite like this. Nor me, sir. Now, if uh, we could only get something that uh, would attract these blighters, we could kill them faster and, and maybe return this land to its uh, natural state. Some kind of bait? Exactly. I think I might know how. And more dynamite. I'm running pretty low. Let me see what I can do. Thank you, John. And take care. <laughs>
Mr. Ricketts. Hello, sir. How have you been? As you imagine. Good. Did you get the dynamite? Yes. Mm. And the bait. Huh. Let's see. work with that for a second. Uh, this uh, calls for a soft touch. Not the brutish hands of a man of war, but the delicate touch of an artist. Some uh, use oils, and some a chisel and a block of marble. For me, sir, it uh, was always either high explosives or the trigger of a fine iron. But it's much the same. Sometimes your humility overwhelms me, Ricky. <laughs> you and me both, Mr. Marston. Now, if you'd have seen me when I was a young man, if you'd have seen me when I was so fast, you couldn't see me. Well, then you'd know this is humility. The truth is, well, the truth is long dead. Now we got only memories. Memories and a great swath of demonic mutants, of course. <laughs> Have you heard anything? I heard a man in Chicago was writing a biography of me. And can you believe it? An artist in Pittsburgh painted my portrait. I mean, the demonic hordes. Not your own unending glory. No. Oh. <laughs> that. Nothing too interesting. Someone said that there's some really big problems near Escalera. But I can't concern myself too much with that. This is my home now. This, and this up here. Take care of yourself. I will. I don't think getting savaged by some brainless corpse would do too much justice to your myth. <laughs> yeah, I think you're teasing me, Mr. Marston. But I thank you. And I appreciate your concern nonetheless. Que bueno! Senor Marston, how wonderful to see you alive! I think I've cleared Sepulcro. You're a brave servant of righteousness. 
I've been called many things in my time, but never that. <laughs> Who is that girl, by the way? She? I don't know. She said she was in a holy order in Escalera. I'm sure I keep seeing her. Or someone like her. Maybe. But it is a common enough look. Seemed like a nice girl. She told me something interesting. What's that? She blamed this terrible curse on our soon-to-be president, Abraham Reyes. Perhaps you have heard of him. Heard of him? I know him well. I hope that vain, ambitious, and repugnant parasite is no friend of yours. Not exactly. I didn't think he was that bad. And who am I to judge? Forgive me. I have just heard many unpleasant stories and met too many pregnant and abandoned girls. Of course. But what has he done? She claimed he had angered an ancient goddess, disturbed a crypt and a temple in her honor. <laughs> I mean, as I say it, it sounds like heresy, like the idiotic delusions of a cursed people. But in a land such as this, I have learned to be less dogmatic than maybe I have been instructed. I am sure it is just folly. Perhaps. But maybe it's time I go pay El President a visit anyway. I shall pray for you. Someone certainly needs to. Goodbye, Mother Superior. Vaya con Dios, mijo. Senora, donde, donde is Abraham Reyes? He always did have a way with the ladies. <laughs> it's okay. He's dead. Thank you, senor. You'll be okay. I'm glad you think so. But I fear I won't. None of us will. We are all doomed. Because of him. Him? He wasn't a great guy, but I'm afraid you're giving him a little too much credit, my dear. Haven't I seen you before? No. He, he... He caused this with his greed and his lust for power. He heard an ancient myth and tested it. It caused all of these terrible things. His vanity overwhelmed us all. What the hell are you talking about? Where have I seen you? A me? Oh, I have a common enough face. I'm from here. He disturbed the royal burial grounds that lie underneath the town. He heard there was a mask hidden there that would make him invincible. I've heard this blamed on Mexicans, Jewish people, freed slaves, the federal government, immigrants, the bad weather, now this. What's wrong with people? It's true. Look in that chest. He has a sacred mask. That is where this plague came from. Him and his awful lust for power. Where did you say the crypt was? Near the bullfighting ring, behind the via. Well, I guess it's worth a shot.
Find the tomb and replace the mask. Wait here. It's too dangerous. You need me. I know what needs to be done. I sure hope you're right. Looks nice in here. A presidential palace should never have been built above a sacred place. Harmony is fragile. The greatest catastrophes occur when new men try to break up. Damn! Look at their eyes! The fire of their discontent. Attacking you. You really are a strange girl. Many of these died in a great battle on this very sea. No wonder they don't seem to like it. Put these troubled souls to rest. We must confront the dark corridor to our presence. against yourself. That's what Jack was.
Discover. Turn the mask. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. How do you know? My name is Ayotioto. A horse is waiting for you. You should return home. trouble starts, I can pretty much guarantee you'll ride off into the sunset. You feeling better? Yes. I mean, once that boy stopped trying to bite me, everything felt much better. I'm starving, though. Jack? Uh, me? Oh, well, I only felt better once that mad look left your eye. Please, Dad, don't leave me here alone with that woman again. Uh, excuse me? I'll try not to, son. Uh, I've heard that before. Uh. Well, let me fix us something to eat. Please don't. We've had enough dramatics for one day. 